Chapter 6 The Marriage of Devayani One warm afternoon, pleasantly tired with sporting in the woods, Devayani and the daughters of Vrishaparva, king of the Asuras, went to bathe in the cool waters of a sylvan pool, depositing their garlands on the bank before they entered its waters. A strong breeze blew their clothes together into a huddled heap and when they came to take them up again, some mistakes naturally occurred. It so happened that Princess Sarmishta, the daughter of the king, clad herself in Devyani's clothes. The latter was vexed and exclaimed half in jest at the impropriety of the daughter of a disciple wearing the clothes of the master's daughter. These words were spoken half in jest, but the princess Sarmishta became very angry and said arrogantly, Do you not know that your father humbly bows in reverence to my royal father every day? Are you not the daughter of a beggar who lives on my father's bounty? You forget I am of the royal race which proudly gives, while you come of a race which begs and receives, and you dare to speak thus to me. Samishta went on, getting angrier and angrier as she spoke, till, working herself up into a fit of anger, she finally slapped Devyani on the cheek and pushed her into a dry well. The Asura maidens thought that Devyani had lost her life and returned to the palace. Devyani had not been killed by the fall into the well, but was in a sad plight because she could not climb up the steep sides. Emperor Yayati of the Bharata race, who was uh, hunting in the forest, by a happy chance came to this spot in search of water to slake his thirst. When he glanced into the well, he saw something bright and looking closer, he was surprised to find a beautiful maiden lying in the well. He asked, Who are you, O beautiful maiden, with bright earrings and ruddy nails? Who is your father? What is your ancestry? How did you fall into the well? She replied, I am the daughter of Sukracharya. He does not know that I have fallen into the well. Lift me up. And she held forth her hands. Yayati seized her hand and helped her out of the well. Devyani did not wish to return to the capital of the king of the Asuras. She did not feel it safe to go there. As she pondered again and again on Sarmishta's conduct, she told Yayati, You have held a maiden by her right hand and you must marry her. I feel that you are in every way worthy to be my husband. Yayati replied, Loving soul, I am a Kshatriya and you are a Brahmana maiden. How can I marry you? How can the daughter of Sukracharya, who is worthy to be the preceptor of the whole world, submit to be the wife of a Kshatriya like myself? Revered lady, return home. Having said these words, Yayati went back to his capital. A Kshatriya maiden could marry a Brahmana according to the ancient tradition, but it was considered wrong for a Brahmana maiden to marry a Kshatriya. The important thing was to keep the racial status of women unlowered. Hence, Anuloma or the practice of marrying men of higher castes was legitimate and the reverse practice known as Pratiloma, that is marrying men of a lower caste was prohibited by the Shastras. Devyani had no mind to return home. She remained sunk in sorrow in the shade of a tree in forest. Sukracharya loved Devyani more than his life. After waiting long in vain for the return of his daughter, who had gone to play with her companions, he sent a woman in search of her. The messenger, after a weary search, came on her at last near the tree where she was sitting in dejection, her eyes red with anger and grief. And she asked her what had happened. Devyani said, Friend, go at once and tell my father that I will not set my foot in the capital of Vrishaparva. And she sent her back to Sukracharya. Extremely grieved at the sad plight of his daughter, Sukracharya hurried to her. Caressing her, he said, It is by their own actions, good or bad, that men are happy or miserable. 
the virtues or vices of others will not affect us in the least with these words of wisdom he tried to console her she replied in sorrow and anger father leave alone my merits and faults which are after all my own concern but tell me this was sarmishta the daughter of rishaparva right when she told me you were but a minstrel singing the praises of kings she called me the daughter of a mendicant living on the doles won by flattery not content with this arrogant contumely she slapped me and threw me into a pit which was nearby i cannot stay in any place within her father's territory and devyani began to weep sukracharya drew himself up proudly devyani he said with dignity you are not the daughter of a court minstrel your father does not live on the wages of flattery you are the daughter of one who is reverenced by all the world indra the king of the gods knows this and vrishaparva is not ignorant of his debt to me but no worthy man extols his own merits and i shall say no more about myself arise you are a peerless gem among women bringing prosperity to your family be patient let us go home in this context bhagwan vyasa advises humanity in general in the following words of counsel addressed by sukracharya to his daughter he conquers the world who patiently puts up with the abuse of his neighbors he who controls his anger as a horseman breaks an unruly horse is indeed a charioteer and not he who merely holds the reins but lets the horse go wherever whither it would he sh- who sheds his anger just as a snake its love is a real hero he who is not moved despite the greatest torments inflicted by others will realize his aim he who never gets angry is superior to the ritualist who faithfully performs for a hundred years the sacrifices ordained by scripture servants friends brothers wife children virtue and truth abandon the man who gives way to anger the wise will not take to heart the words of boys and girls devyani humbly told her father i am indeed a little girl but i hope not too young to benefit by the great truth uh, truth taught by you yet it is not proper to live with persons who have no sense of decency or decorum the wise will not keep company with those who speak ill of their family however rich they may be the ill mannered are really the veritable chandalas outside the pale of caste the virtuous should not mix with them my mind is ablaze with the anger roused by the taunts of vrishaparva's daughter the wounds inflicted by weapons may close in time scalps may heal gradually but wounds inflicted by words remain painful as long as one lives sukracharya went to vrishaparva and fixing his eyes on him gravely said woking though one sins may not bring immediate punishment they are sure sooner or later to destroy the very germ of prosperity kacha the son of brihaspati was a brahmachari who had conquered his senses and never committed any sin he served me with faith fidelity and never strayed from the path of virtue your attendants tried to kill him i bore it my daughter who holds her honor high had to hear dishonoring words uttered by your daughter besides she was pushed pushed into a well by your daughter she cannot any more stay in your kingdom without her i cannot live here either so i am going out of your kingdom at these words the king of the asuras was sorely troubled and said i am ignorant of the charges laid at my door if you abandon me i shall enter fire and die sukracharya replied i care more for the happiness of my daughter than for the fate of you and your asuras for she is the one thing i have and dearer to me than life itself if you can appease her it is well and good otherwise i go 
Rishaparva and his retinue went to the tree under which Devyani stood and they threw themselves at her feet in supplication. Devyani was stubborn and said, Sarmishta, who told me that I was the daughter of a beggar, should become my handmaiden and attend on me in the house into which my father gives me in marriage. Rishaparva consented and asked his attendants to fetch his daughter Sarmishta. Sarmishta admitted her fault and bowed in submission. She said, let it be as my companion Devyani desires. My father shall not lose his preceptor for a fault committed by me. I will be her attendant. Devyani was pacified and returned to her house with her father. On another occasion also, Devyani came across Yayati. She repeated her request that he should take her as his wife since he had clasped her right hand. Yayati again repeated his objection that he, a Kshatriya, could not lawfully marry a Brahmana. Finally, they both went to Sukracharya and got his assent to their marriage. This is an instance of the Pratiloma marriage which was resorted to on exceptional occasions. The Shastras no doubt prescribe what is right and forbid what is wrong. But marriage once effected cannot be made invalid. Yayati and Devyani spent many days in happiness. Sarmishta remained with her as an attendant. One day Sarmishta met Yayati in secret and earnestly prayed to be taken her also as his wife. He yielded to her prayer and married her without the knowledge of Devyani. But Devyani came to know of it and was naturally very angry. She complained to her father and Sukracharya in his rage cursed Yayati with premature old age. Thus Yayati stricken with age in the very prime of his manhood begged so humbly for forgiveness that Sukracharya, who had not forgotten Devyani's rescue from the well, at last relented. He said, O king, you have lost the glory which is youth. The curse cannot be recalled. But if you can persuade anyone to exchange his youth for your age, the exchange will take effect. Thus he blessed Yayati and bade him farewell.